I like to think of hot chocolate bomb molds as fitting into one of three categories. There's the flexible silicone, hard plastic polycarbonate, and a three-part mold. And that's the one that we're gonna be using today. Now this mold is a relatively new concept and it definitely has many advantages to hot chocolate bomb making. I'm going to be making these white hot chocolate bombs and if you're wondering how much chocolate I'm using or just want this all written out, I got you. I have what I call my hot chocolate bomb calculator on my website and I'll link to that below this video. It calculates how much you'll need based on the mold that you're using and how many bombs you want to make. You'll also find links to all the tools I use in all my videos to make hot chocolate bombs. It's a brand new calculator I made. It's not as extensive as my cake calculator, but I may add more things along the way if you need them. Okay, let's go over the anatomy of a three-part mold. And as the name implies, there are three parts. Well, there's really five, but three are identical. So I take this thing apart. It's kind of this flimsy plastic that you get electronics in that are hard to cut apart. Plastic is called PET or or polyethylene tetrathalate for all my chemistry nerds. It's food safe, BPA free, all that good stuff, but it's not heat resistant. So don't put this in a dishwasher or oven. There's this bottom part that you pour chocolate into these thinner plastic inserts. And then there's the top part. So there are your three parts. And this is a new mold. So what I like to do is mark the bottom piece or the piece that I'm gonna be pouring chocolate into with a marker. When I'm working with these really fast, the bottom and the top piece look almost identical. And there have been many times where I actually pour chocolate into that top piece piece and try to wedge the bottom into the top and it's a mess. You'll also know which one is the bottom piece because it'll have a indicator line in the cavity, but that's sometimes really hard to see. So that's why I like to mark it. I'm going to weigh out some compound chocolate and compound chocolate is just a type of candy coating chocolate. It's not real chocolate. Um, and so it doesn't require any tempering. It's just a melt and go kind of chocolate. This one here is called Merkins, which I quite like the taste of. It's not too waxy or overly artificial. Anyways, I go over the details of compound chocolate and my hot chocolate bomb calculator if you need more details on that. And we want to melt this on 30 second intervals, stirring between each heating. I did a total of one minute for a little over a five ounces of chocolate here, and I did overheat it. So look what happens when I try to drizzle some off the end of the spatula. You see how it's kind of clumpy, kind of like thick mud with creases. Compound chocolate is really strange in that when it gets hot, it gets thicker. That seems counterintuitive, at least to me, because I always think of melting things as liquefying them, but it's really easy to fix. You didn't burn it or anything. Thing, you just have to let it cool down. So I like to just stir it a bit. And once you see that it's nice and fluid and it runs off of the end of the spatula really nicely, it's good to go. Okay, I like to do all of my chocolate work on a silicone mat so I can scrape up all the pieces of drip chocolate and reuse them after I'm done. I'm gonna disassemble my mold and look for the marking that I made so I can pour the chocolate in. And my calculator, or not my calculator, my... <laughs> I'm so used to saying calculator. And my hot chocolate bomb calculator should tell you exactly how much chocolate you'll need in total to melt, but there's really not a lot of guesswork on how much chocolate to put in each cavity because you just fill to the indicator line. And once you fill all the cavities, you're gonna take those loose, thinner, flexible inserts and place them directly on the chocolate. Then take your top plastic piece and press it onto the bottom piece. Flip the whole mold over and you'll probably see that the chocolate hasn't reached the edge of each cavity and that's normal. So after you make sure that the top and bottom piece are totally up against each other. And I do this by pressing it on the counter just really gently. Take your thumb and forefinger and run it along the edge of each cavity along the bottom. This is going to allow some of the thick chocolate to migrate all the way down. And don't worry if you have any overflow. That's usually pretty thin and easy to break off when the chocolate has dried. Okay, this whole thing goes in the fridge for at least 15 minutes or in the freezer for about 10. The number one problem people usually have with this mold is that they can't get the chocolate out. Chocolate and even compound chocolate here, I think naturally contracts or shrinks as it sets. So it will pull away from the surface of the mold, either this three-part mold or a hard polycarbonate mold, and it should be very easy to remove. You see how I can't take these out? I wanted to show you how hard it is to get chocolate out when it's not completely set. So I'm gonna put this back into the freezer for another five minutes and see if I can take it out then. Okay, five minutes have passed and let me show you the difference. And you see how easy it is to take out this chocolate. Oh, and another thing, I'm going to go ahead and put on some gloves. I really like them for helping not getting fingerprints on chocolate. I used to get a lot of comments on TikTok about not wearing gloves, that the fact that I didn't wear gloves when I made hot chocolate bombs, but I don't sell these. I just make them for family and friends. My hands are actually naturally pretty cold, so I don't melt chocolate. But if you have warmer hands and have problem with fingerprints and things like that, gloves may be able to help you. And to remove the plastic inserts, I just hold a chocolate shell in the palm of my hand and kind of rotate it while peeling the 
that plastic insert away. Now for stability, when we're filling and assembling them, it's good to put them in silicone or paper liners so they don't roll around when we're trying to work with them. I'm gonna fill the ones in the silicone cups with this white hot cocoa powder that I got and dehydrated marshmallows. So dehydrated marshmallows are really good to use because well, they're dehydrated, they don't have any moisture in them. They can't get any more dried out like regular marshmallows. So if you plan on making your hot chocolate bombs ahead of time and wanna hand these out and don't wanna give people stale marshmallows, these are good to use. Now to assemble the spheres, you'll need a warm plate or pan. It doesn't need a lot of heat. In fact, it's easier if you don't apply too much heat to this plate or pan. Um, that way you can heat the chocolate very gently. I take an empty shell and just brush it on the surface of the hot pan to melt the chocolate a little bit, then immediately place it on the filled half. The melted chocolate ends up welding the two halves together. My recipes in my calculator usually give a little bit of extra chocolate for decoration, or you can just melt a little bit more. I'm gonna color this white chocolate. Just make sure that if you color yours as well, you use an oil-based color. I love color mill. It's a little bit more pricey, but they do have a really extensive color line. Um, you can also look for Wilton's candy coloring. And I'm going to pour this into a parchment piping bag and drizzle some lines over the top. If you want to add any sprinkles like I'm doing here, just make sure to do it immediately because these thin lines tend to dry really quickly. And here's the finished bomb with a three-part mold. The advantages of this mold are definitely the consistency and speed with which you can make perfect hollow spheres. Your only limitation will be how many molds you have and these are a little bit pricier than the silicone ones as each mold only makes three half spheres at a time. Seeing as how the mold is made with a less stable plastic, they're not gonna be as durable as the polycarbonate mold, but they should work great if you're a hobby baker like me.